All right, Matt, so let's go step by step through exactly what we need to make the pulley protection splints. Okay. And know that as you're watching these videos or you're looking at this blog entry or this paper, that there are asterisks over the ones items that you need to have. And then there's ones that are nice to have. We're gonna show all of them. Now first, it's nice to have a splint pan. You need something to heat up the water to mold the splint. And at the bottom of the pan, we have netting as well as a thermometer on it to tell the temperature. Now a little dirt bag tip, if you don't want to go out and buy this, then you can just use a, a stove as well as a pot to heat the water to mold. We additionally have here, this is a heat gun. And the heat gun is nice to have. The heat gun allows you to round the edges of the splint to make it a little bit more comfortable. And there's a clamp that's holding it or attaching it to the table. You can also see that we have needle nose pliers. So when you're molding the pulley protection splint and you're smoothing the edges, it's nice to hold it with pliers. You can see as well we have a utility knife. Matt, tell us about the utility knife and some of the materials that we'll also use. Okay, so the reason why we have a utility knife here is, so this is the piece of thermoplastic. Um, as you can see, it is very, very uh, dense and very strong. So to cut the strips that we need, You'll take the utility knife, you will score it multiple times, and then once you have a nice groove in there, you will snap it and it will snap into the shape that you need. Um, following, we have uh, just a standard pen and a marker. Those will be used to mark the template that you will essentially just you know, shape out of a strip of paper towel. And that will essentially be the pattern or the template that will uh, be the, the plastic piece. Next, we have a china marker here. Uh, it's essentially a waterproof wax marker. But as you can see, the plastic that we have is a dark color, so neither of these pens will show up on here. So if we use this, we can mark that. And next we have, this is called a mandrel. Um, this is traditionally used to uh, size rings. And as we're making pulley protection splints or a pulley ring, this is gonna come in handy. But we also have these two strips of wiring, 16 to gauge wiring here. And the importance of having this wire is, so as we're making the pulley protection splint, we wanna make sure that there is a space on the side of the fingers on both sides to protect the vasculature. So the wiring is nice and there's two methods we'll go over. The method with the mandrel, where you attach the wiring to the mandrel. And the second method, the method of the finger, where you attach the wire directly to the finger. Additionally, to adhere the pulley protection splint, we'll get, we're going to use Luco tape, And we have a moleskin as well to give it some padding. Okay. You can use scissors, and the scissors are going to allow you to cut the, the pulley protection splint when you're molding it. And you can use curved scissors or straight scissors. Okay. So I believe, Matt, that that's everything we have on our list. Oh, well, well, no, actually, there's one more thing. I think you forgot something. It's really important. The soap. The soap. You have to have the soap. Okay. So you have to be able to put the soap into the pot to allow the material not to stick as much. So I think we're covered. Is that everything? The soap's important, but there's actually an even more important piece. What's more important? Uh, well, you need a spatula to be able to get your plastic out. But, I mean, who doesn't like Alex Honnold? This is the specifically Alex Honnold foundation piece from Black Diamond. So Nice. All right. If so you, you want to have... make plinths and splints in style. <laughs> go with that. Yeah, any spatula will do, but splints in style and go with Alex Honnold. Yeah. Let's get to work. 